All right, guys, this is going to be pretty much the start of the introduction of the four door for basically phase two because I phase one was dragging it in from a barn and I got it running and moving new brakes and stuff. Then I sold the straight six three speed out of it to a guy to put in his tri five four door project. And then it got pushed into the fenced area and left because I'm trying to finish my hard top. So I ended up deciding to take a seven day week off from the hard top to kind of get a break from it because uh, it's driving me absolutely insane uh, and I decided to pull this around here and do a little bit of work to it uh, for just a few days worth and then it'll end up going back out there one of the things I wanted to do was uh, go through all the parts so I've laid everything out here uh, so I'll run you guys through that because I don't know if you're like me or not but I love going through parts and pieces and looking at stuff and comparing pieces with others that you know see what's better and that type of stuff but Anyway, so I think it'll be a pretty fun uh, little video. Now, there's so much stuff here that I want to talk about. Probably going to take two videos to go through the parts uh, to explain everything pretty well, but I have a ton of extra stuff that I will not be using, so uh, I'm kind of at that point where I probably better do an introduction video first before I get to the parts. So, in case you haven't caught all the other videos, uh, I'm only going to work on this car for a few days. So I'm going to try to make it count. There are some things that I want to do to the car. And one thing is get rid of some of the stuff that's on it, which is going to be the original motor mounts from the straight six. I'm going to remove these from the frame. I want to remove the exhaust. I'm going to cut off the transmission mounts off the frame there because I'm going to build a cross member. I'm going to get rid of the uh, linkage pivots here. There's two of them. I'll drill the spot welds out and knock them off. Uh, I want to get rid of the wiring that I'd run to get the car to run. I'm going to remove that wiring, probably end up reusing it as well, but uh, anyway, so I'd already done a Speedway disc brake kit on the front, and yes, that is correct to have the caliper on the front per the instructions, so in case anybody's wondering. Anyway, I'd redid all the brakes in the rear of the car, it has new wheel cylinders, brake shoes, had the drums turned, it's got a new rear rubber brake hose on it, I put a new single reservoir master cylinder uh, on it, these are like 30 bucks from O'Reilly's for brand new. These are not remands. And this is for a 1962 Chevy pickup. It's pretty much a bolt-on, but it's really inexpensive is what I like about it. I've run several of those, even with the discs, and it stops very well. So anyway, so the plan, the main thing I'm going to try to do, which I was going to do just some sheet metal work, uh, what I have decided to do, because it'll kind of help me out in the garage, I have an old wore out stripped apart 305 over here uh, this thing would have to be bored out it's pretty wasted but i'm going to use it for a mock-up block and this is the transmission that i'm actually going to use in the car so the 350 turbo short tail this is actually a c 350c it has electronic uh, lockup converter which you don't even have to hook up i've run many of those through the years uh, anyway that's what's going to go in the car uh, i have a side engine mount kit which is over here uh, this is something that I'd got off eBay a long time ago that had been new in the box. Uh, but anyway, this moves the engine three quarters of an inch forward for HEI distributor clearance. I have brand new energy suspension urethane engine mounts and a transmission mount. I had those on a car for mock-up and I never finished the car. I ended up trading it off for something else and I got to keep the engine trans and the, that stuff. So I'll end up using them on this car. Um, got a cool old dual snorkel air cleaner thing that I've used a lid off of something else on but I'm gonna put it on the car but anyway that's a plan I want to I want to do the side engine mounts set up on the car and get it get it figured out where it needs to go uh, and then I'm gonna build my own cross member I've got uh, a bunch of steel up here I've kind of got got my eye on either this piece or this piece square tubing and uh, I'll build a mount pad and everything out of another piece of square tubing and uh, I'm gonna do some uh, pieces of angle on the sides of the frame and uh, build some pads on the end of our drill holes in order to unbolt and bolt in. So that's kind of what I've decided to do at that point is remove some of the stuff that I'm not going to be needing that's going to be in the way and then build a cross member, set up, figure out where the motor and tranny is going. And at that point, I can leave the mock up engine and trans in this car and it'll be out of my way in the garage floor. So it'll be in here. When I push it back here at the end of my seven days, I'm going to push the car back in there. And that stuff will be out of my way so i'll probably just set the front clip right back on it and lay the hood on it that way it'll keep all the water mostly off of everything but anyway this car uh, i do want to build it for my wife 
uh, it's going to be, I'm going to paint it, I'm going to take it off the frame, uh, I'm just going to clean the frame up with the uh, knotted cup brushes on grinders, and I'll use my portable blaster in the hard to reach areas, uh, but for the majority of it, I can't afford to take it and have it sandblasted. It usually costs several hundred dollars to do, uh, so I'm just going to do it myself here. It'll take a lot longer, but this will be something later when I get to the restoration part of it. But anyway, I've got some old paint in there. It's uh, Summit Racing's Hot Rod Satin Black. Uh, it's a single stage paint. That's what I'm going to use on the chassis because it's here. It's free. You don't have to pay for anything. If you've ever thought of a budget built car, I can guarantee you this is going to be one of the biggest budget built cars, lowest budget built cars you've ever seen in your life. I'm going to try to make it look good with hardly any money, which is going to be kind of hard to do, but I've done it a few times before. I kind of got a, a way of doing it. So Anyway, I'll get you started here on some of the, the stuff the car needs. Uh, overall, all the, the cowl and everything is really good shape on the car. Uh, the doors are in pretty good shape. I noticed there's one little spot you can stick your finger through in the bottom of that front door over there. So I'm gonna, I've got an extra set of 56 doors back. Uh, they're really, really rusty, but that certain area of that door, I'm just gonna cut that piece out. It's actually good on the other door and I'm just gonna patch it in, but weld it in there. But I do have to put floor pans in it. Somebody's, can you imagine what that sounded like at a stoplight? sitting there vibrating uh, anyway I'm gonna put a floor pan inserts right here in I'm gonna patch this and the other side they fiberglassed I'm gonna have to go in there and try to get all that out of there it's gonna be fun uh, they've also had a floor shifter in here a three-speed Hearst floor shifter I do have an old trans tunnel from a parts car uh, so I'm gonna cut that piece out cut uh, the piece of mine out and butt weld it all in and grind both sides so it should look like nothing's ever been done but this back here is the dog leg that's rusty if you're ever going to look at a tri-5 chevy four-door car to build for yourself open the rear doors and check these areas this is a common place for a four-door the other side on this car is mint there's nothing this side's uh, rusty i have repaired several of these through the years so i'm just going to build my own i'm not going to buy the patch panel i'm just going to build it myself it's not that hard to do but I did a video on this thing, I think it was at the end of last summer, uh, just walking around talking about parts that I needed. Had a lot of friends and family step up. I've got several friends that have some four doors, you know, out in their fields and stuff that they've used for parts cars and they would show up here and just give me four door stuff, just give it to me. So now I have a lot of the stuff. The only thing I still haven't acquired is a hood bird. That's the only thing I don't have for the car. I did uh, have a guy who was going to give me one. Uh, but it, it really looked bad. It was really bad pitted, so I wouldn't use it. Uh, looking for something a little bit cleaner. And more likely, I'll probably have to end up buying a new one. But uh, it's later, because I'm not spending any money on this car right now. This is just stuff I can do here for free, like fabricate things and just build what I've got, basically. But like this side, the dog leg is mint. Like there's nothing there. Rear floorboards are nice. I had cut brushed all the floor and then brushed POR 15 on. I even did the firewall tow boards and back behind the dash and under the dash and all that. So that's all clean. And the only area I didn't do is right up in here because I have to do all that metal work in here. But uh, overall, the car is, it's a great car. There's no uh, underbody braces that are rusty. None, the backside of the rockers aren't rusty. Uh, I did notice the frame has damage uh, up here. So I did some cross uh, measuring, X measuring on it. Uh, pretty much this brace section on both is where it needs to be, but it's just this end this one is out a little bit It's like in a little bit So it looks to me like it took a whack this way uh, because the fender on this side of the car has been replaced so I am thinking about cutting this off uh, right up here where this part comes in and meets this I'm thinking about cutting this off and then laying this out on the table and that way I may actually take this to a buddy of mine that has a torch. I don't have a torch here, uh, so we can heat that up. I'll have him heat it up and I'll do the hammering on it. And then I'll just bring it back and weld it back on. But this side's pretty good. It just has a little wrinkle right here, or right here. And uh, like this right here has a little spot. But overall, it's pretty good. But you know, luckily I have a good frame here that I can get my measurements from, so. This is the only thing that needs work, but it's it's so jacked that, uh, you know, hammering it on the car I don't think is going to work. So I'd rather just cut it off and lay it down on a table, heat it up red, and then, you know, beat it into submission and then just weld it right back on. Anyway, um, 
it's kind of cool the way things worked out on the front of the car uh, somebody has replaced the ball joints on the car both lowers have been replaced and that upper over there has been replaced but this one's still original when i did the disc brake for conversion on the car i put a floor jack under because i had the weight of the engine and everything on it but i put a floor jack under the a-arm and it'll raise the wheel up and i stuck my pry bar up in there and was moving it around both lower ball joints are tight so actually the whole front end was tight which was kind of surprising other than the you know the ar bushings are totaled out but i'm going to end up reusing those lower uh ball joints i'm just going to clean them up and reuse them because uh, of these a-arms that i have these uh, overseas lower ball joints are no good they're out of the box those things were sloppy so it ended up working out and it saved me money but also the car had an idler arm bearing kit already in it so somebody put an older version of a idler arm kit in it and it steers really nice like it is super nice to roll around so that that's really really good the other thing was the steering box on this car usually you can figure out you have a decent box by how high the stud sticks up out of the nut on your steering box if these are way down in there, it means that steering box has a lot of wear in it. And over time, mechanics have went in there and adjusted this down to uh, get the slop out of the steering. So if you're on the hunt for a used steering box, see if you can find one that a little bit of the studs hanging up out of. It's generally a good indication that you might be able to tighten it up a little bit to get some of the slack out of it before rebuilding it. I have never personally rebuilt one of those. I've always just tried to find good used boxes. and uh, This one here doesn't seem to have a whole lot of slack in it at all, but I'm still going to tighten it just a little bit. What else? Where am I at on minutes? Wasting the hell out of everybody's time is all I'm doing. So uh, the car, when I got it, was in this shape with the wiper. Uh, that wiper transmission is still in the car and all the cable stuff still hooked up over there. But this one was out of the car. And it was actually, when I cleaned the car out, it was laying in there and it was broken. That's why it's gone. Uh, somebody had another one in the car, so they were gonna, was gonna replace it at one time. But uh, my cousin Steve, he's, took all his old stuff out because he's putting rain gear in his car. So I got the whole everything from him uh, to put in this car. This is the used original stuff. Like there's a two-speed electric wiper motor right there that's still good used when it's nice and quiet I'm going to use. but uh, So that worked out pretty good. And then I had, I don't know if I have them laying out here. I seen them a while ago. I don't know what I did with them. I have a pair of used, uh, the chrome... I think they call them extensions or whatever that go right here. I have a pair of these that are used originals that are super nice, super nice chrome. So I've saved them back for that. It's just kind of cool for me. I, I get real excited with the drag in an old car like this and I'm planning on making just a driver out of it. For me, the fun of it is finding other used parts that are good to put on it. You know, cause every time you drag a car in, if you have two of the same parts, one of them is going to be nicer than the other one and that's just one of my things i've always loved is picking out the best pieces and i have as you can see tons of extra parts to go through and uh, there's more stuff that friends have stepped up and gave me it's pretty cool like i haven't spent any money on this car it's all freebie stuff man it's just going to be kick ass <laughs> you know to not have any money in other than what was paid for the car um, Anyway, just real excited, but I'm easily excited like that. I love old cars, especially 55 Chevys, man. If anybody's curious as to what my favorite cars are in the world, uh, my list of tops, they're kind of weird. Uh, 55 Chevys is at the top of the list. Uh, I like uh, Buick Grand Nationals, the intercooled ones, 86, 87. I've had four 87 Grand Nationals and one 87 Turbo T. I like uh, Tucker Torpedoes, uh, you know, 48, 1948 Tucker Torpedo. That's out of the realm of something I'll ever get. I just like the car. I think it's cool. Um, there's others. Uh, Challengers, Cudas, I like that type of stuff. I'm kind of all over the place. I like a little bit of everything. I like, like old coupes, uh, any model really, I, preferably Fords though. I'd, I would love, I mean, this is something I would love to do later, but I doubt I ever have the money to do it. I have a 1979 model Buick Turbo V6 engine. Uh, it's a carbureted version of the Buick V6. It's not intercooled, but I have everything. I actually have two full complete engines here. Uh, I would like to find a Model A coupe or sedan, even a four-door sedan, that uh, is pretty much all original with fenders and everything. And I want to keep it all original looking, 
They don't want to put that turbo V6 in a turbo 350 in it, like a 10 bolt rear, do the Speedway uh, straight axle disc brake kit they sell. Just keep it to where it looks like a Model A with you know factory style steering wheel and everything, but <laughs> have a turbo V6 in there because those little Buick V6s are not very big. So I'm pretty sure it'd probably fit in there. I just always thought that'd be kind of cool. And it may be something that maybe I might get to do later if I ever hit, hit it rich, you know, which I doubt I ever do, but just a thought. Those uh, early Buick V6s are, you know, not they're not powerhouses. It's just for me, it's, it's kind of an exotic looking engine that you just don't see anymore. And there's probably a reason for that, but they weren't very reliable. But, you know, a carbureted little V6 Buick, I have lots of experience with turbo V6s, but uh, Buick ones. But I just always thought it'd be cool. But I actually wanted to put a turbo V6 Buick in this, the one I have here in this. But it's going to cost me like $1,200 to rebuild that engine and me build it myself. But that's with all the new parts. So I'm kind of out on that. I'm going to use the old free 305 small block out there out of that Monte Carlo. So anyway, guys, this is the episode one, I guess, of the introduction. And we're basically just going to do... This is mock-up stage. I'm just going to mock up a motor and trans. I might do a little middle work. It just depends. Uh, it's supposed to rain this afternoon. Looks like it's getting ready to start any minute. I got all this mess out here. Some of this stuff can get wet. I don't really care. But anyway, I'm going to jump off here and get started. So thanks for watching and stay tuned. Probably going to do two or three more videos today, actually. <laughs>